Three rounds in, we can start to put together some impressions of the 2022 AFL season, and in particular Brisbane, Melbourne and Carlton, the teams which are flying at 3-0. While a strong start for two of those three teams is not surprising, the Blues have been successful so far beyond the expectations of all but the most one-eyed Carlton fans. Obviously with 20 rounds still to go, there is a lot of time left for events to change, players to get injured or go out of form, and for other teams to work the leaders out. Right now, however, there are some things we know and things we don't yet know about these top three sides. Let's have a look. What we know about Brisbane. Brisbane Lions first, 12 points, 173.4% leading goal kicker. Joe Daniha, 9 goals most disposals. Lorchinil, 99 key stats. The Lions are the top scoring side in the AFL. They have the second best defense in the AFL. From the opening round, we know that the Lions are capable of playing an average match and still mounting a final quarter comeback to overcome opponents. We also know that Brisbane can be ruthless with the football and put teams to the sword, just ask North Melbourne. It is clear already that Lord Neal is back in something approaching his best form, aka Brownlow medal winning form, which makes the Lions much more dangerous going forward. He was almost not needed in the demolition of the Kangaroos, but his display in round 2 against Essendon, 41 disposals, 12 clearances, 9 inside 50s, 9 score involvements and 7 intercepts, was pivotal. Lord Neal was brilliant against the Urs, and the Lions star will prove more than a handful for the league's defences in 2022. We also know that the big positional change of the early season, moving Dane Zorko to halfback, is working very well. The magician may not be playing the contested ball role for now, but his vision and presence of halfback guiding the play is helping the Lions' ball movement. And what we don't. The first question that will get answered this week is can big man Darcy Fort carry the Lions in the absence of Oscar McEnany? The combination of both men has been part of Brisbane's success in the first few rounds. The pair have averaged a combined 33 hitouts, 23 disposals, 8 clearances, 8 score involvements and 4 intercepts. Against the Cats, they will meet Reese Stanley and Mark Blitzarves, who average a combined 30 touches, 25 hitouts, 4 clearances, 12 score involvements and 9 intercepts. It's not just about the tap work. If Fort struggles, the Lions may find themselves turned around by the Geelong midfield. What about Joe Daniha? The Brisbane spearhead leads the way with 9 goals in 3 games. But a couple of options taken, including the infamous handball on the siren in round 1, suggest a possible issue with confidence. He doesn't have to dominate but he has to take his chances if Brisbane is to go deep. The big thing we don't know. Lions sides have looked impressive at various times in recent seasons, but the acid test will again come with finals. If Chris Fagan's men can maintain their form and have another high finish, can they go the extra step in September? What we know about Melbourne. They are the champions and they are playing like it. Melbourne second, 12 points, 132.4% leading goal kicker, Bailey Fritch 5 most disposals, Clayton Oliver 104 key stats. The Demons lead the league in contested possessions, 4.6 clear of the next highest team. Christian Petrarca leads the league in meters gained 2046 M in the first three rounds. The Demons are doing what needs to be done answering challenges even though they are not yet operating at 100% or near it. The belief and the knowledge they can win a flag is showing. Their winning streak is up to 10 games, dating back to round 19 last year. They have the best player in the league in Christian Petrarca, not to mention a close competitor in Clayton Oliver. Angus Brayshaw, meanwhile, served a timely reminder of his abilities on the weekend, and Sam Weidman booted four goals in Ben Brown's absence. But it may well be that the player whose role could ultimately help them go back to back is Luke Jackson. His size, mobility and ability to impact the play and seize momentum for his side, seen particularly during his efforts against the Suns, 
may give the demons an advantage over opponents. Luke Jackson's physical presence and ability to break play open makes him a damaging weapon. When Max Gorn and Jackson are both flying, teams will struggle to stay with Melbourne. And what we don't. So far the demons have done what they have to, but what happens when they come up against a contender who comes at them for the full four quarters? It seems pretty likely that they have the means to deal with that, but it will take several weeks to get a clearer view. Depending on who you see as legitimate contenders, that may be in round 8 against St Kilda, or against Sydney, Brisbane and Geelong in the second half of the season. What we know about Carlton. Aside from the Blues' place on the ladder, the biggest change in the opening three rounds is the confidence of the team under new coach Michael Voss. Carlton third, 12 points, 115.9% leading goal kicker, Charlie Kerno 8 most disposals, Patrick Cripps 96 key stats, Patrick Cripps is averaging 5 disposals, 5 inside 50s, and 1 clearance more than 2021 star. Matthew Kennedy is averaging 17 disposals, 4 clearances, 2 inside 50s more than 2021 star. Asterisk average for first 3 rounds. So far the Blues have been playing to an identifiable plan, and aside from a nervous final quarter against Hawthorne, they have proved able to maintain that plan. Loading. It's all starting with the midfield. Carlton have gone from 16th in the league in total clearances last season to 5th this year. The two big improvers have been Patrick Cripps and Matthew Kennedy. A fit and firing Cripps leads the league in centre clearances with 15 for the season. And he is a much more dynamic version of himself in 2022. He has an average of more than 7 inside 50s a game this year, and he already has 6 goals. His best return in any previous season is 13. Given his opportunity, Kennedy has flourished, going from an average of 14 disposals a game last year to 31. This is all without Sam Walsh in this equation. The Blues midfield roster looks capable of shaking most opponents. The upshot of this is that Carlton have improved their scoring by 13 points a game, and their defence has improved by 10 points a game. The return of Charlie Kerno in the forward line to partner Harry McKay has given Carlton a new edge in attack, not to mention the delivery from midfield. That four-goal difference now takes them from mid-table mediocrity to an early favourite to make finals. And what we don't. The take a deep breath moment for Blues fans. This is three rounds into a new era. Right now things are clicking and the Voss plan looks strong, but all three sides they have beaten have question marks over them. The big question is how far can talent, belief and a plan take the Blues? Patrick Cripps and Matthew Kennedy have burst from the blocks in 2022, with their improvement driving the Blues midfield. Will this style of play stand up against the likes of the Demons, the Lions and the Cats? The other unknown is whether Cripps and Kerno, in particular, can stay healthy through the season. The loss of either of them, for an extended period would change the game.